So this is the Pencil 2D um, program. Um, there are other programs that you can use, such as Sketchbook or Krita. They are better. Um, but the school computer won't allow me to download them, and I'm guessing it's the same for you guys as well. So we're going to stick with this program. Um, now, in Pencil 2D, it's a little bit limiting. You might notice that you can't make a circle, <laughs> things like this. So uh, you're going to have to use the pencil tool to make the circle, and it is a little bit limiting. Um, now, if you have access to Adobe Animate or um, Adobe Photoshop, you could use that also. Um, you can also use apps such as Flip a Clip um, that allow you to use the actual circle function. Um, but I mean, this is really fine. It does work, um, so I'm going to show you how to do it today. Um, we are going to start in the bitmap layer, and this one, it's your frame here. You can click that. That's the first frame. To add more frames, you press the plus button, and this will add the next frame for you. Um, so we'll start in the first frame, and I'm going to be drawing a circle. Remember that your circles need to go in an arc, so like down in a curve. They don't go in a straight line. Um, and if you look at the PowerPoint, um, there's like closer together and then further apart, closer to the bottom, and then same on the way out. Um, so we'll start with a circle. Unfortunately, my pen isn't working, <laughs> so I'm going to be drawing these freehand. It might look slightly wonky, but actually when you play the animation, it looks a lot better. Start with a circle up here. Slightly wonky, but that's okay. Um, so this is the first circle, and then you want to go and create another frame here. So we're going on to the next frame. Um, you cannot see the circle behind, but you want to create an onion skin and press this here. This will allow you to see what is underneath, so you can layer the circles. Okay. It takes a steady hand to get the circle. Okay, and then I'll add another frame. Remember to keep adding new frames and doing one on top of the other. Well, as your circles get closer to the bottom, they're going to start squishing in a little bit, and then a lot more. So this is called the stretch. And then by the time they get to the bottom, they squash. Squash. And then stretch again. Right. Um, so in order to play this, um, I'm going to be pressing the play button. Um, you can change the amount of frames per second. It starts with 12, so I'll show you what 12 looks like. Um, but I think around 16 is good for this one. Okay. So it's very short. This one just has one ball bounce. You could also do a couple ball bounces. Um, you can do things other than a ball bouncing as long as you're using this stretch and squash technique. Um, making sure that it stretches and squashes and then stretches again. 
Um, and remember that your balls need to be closer together, a little bit further apart, stretching, squashing, and then closer together again. So we'll export this. Go File, Export. And you can export it as a movie or an animated GIF. Um, for this purpose, it will work, but when we create the more complicated short movies that we're going to do um, that are more than like two seconds, um, you might want to actually export as a movie, so an export as an animated GIF. Um, I'm going to keep it the same width and height, and I did a total of 14 frames for this, so I would suggest to do at least 14 frames or more for this project, and then press OK. It should export it, and then you say finish. Okay, so it's called Untitled 2. I'm going to open it up. And there you go. It's a bow dancing. Very short, very simple. I just wanted to give you an idea of how this program works. Thanks, guys.